Hello, everyone. Most people were familiar with the medical necessity of the E&M encounter prior to 2021 documentation guidelines. But how does that equate in 2021? Today, we're going to talk about how to understand medical necessity and 2021 documentation guidelines in the auditing of your encounters. Hello, my name is Shannon DeConda with NamUs, the National Alliance of Medical Auditing Specialist. I know we were all very well aware of medical necessity in the evaluation and management service, even more so prior to 2021. Today, we're gonna to talk about medical necessity in the evaluation management service in 2021 documentation guidelines. Here's what I mean. Let's take a look at the medical decision-making chart that we've been referencing a lot, and let's look at when we really have to consider that risk associated with medical decision-making. Let's focus, if you will, on our MDM chart when it looks something like this. Now, I know this may be a little difficult for you to see, but what I have here is a medical decision-making chart when our presenting problem has scored low, level three, but yet our data has scored as moderate, scoring a level four, and our treatment plan has scored also as a level four. According to our MDM uh, documentation guidelines, technically, we would score this as a level four. However, we have to go back to considering that medical necessity and say, but wait a minute, what about the presenting problem? Do we weigh in this presenting problem and understand the risk associated with how the presenting problem plays into this and the medical necessity of that presenting problem? We know that the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid and the Claims Processing Manual did not remove the language that says medical necessity is the overarching determining factor. So we still should be taking medical necessity into, into consideration. As a matter of fact, if we were to also look at the AMA documentation guidelines, in the guidelines, uh, found on page four, we were given in the technical corrections a new statement that states the term risk is used in these definitions relates to the risk from the condition. While condition risk and management risk may often correlate, the risk from the condition is distinct from the risk of the management. So for those reasons, we should consider the risk of the condition in a different way that we consider the risk of the management. So in this particular patient, if we did have a patient that came in who maybe had strep throat, who we did do a COVID test a strip screen, we talked to mom, that did give us our three points for data, and then we gave them an antibiotic for the strep screen. At the end of the day, the acuity, the medical necessity of the presenting problem is still a strep throat. Does the complexity truly increase in treating that problem because this patient was tested for COVID or because a strep screen was also done or because mother was talked to. Because one of those three issues is what raised this value to a new level of service. So you within your organization need to have a policy here. This is truly one of those gray areas. I can't tell you the secret sauce. No one can tell you the secret sauce because inside these published guidelines, there's no more of an answer than what I just read you. The risk is the risk of the condition. And sometimes it will correlate to the management, but sometimes it won't. So what's your policy? 
are your coders and auditors coding and auditing this situation the same? If you had five team members looking at this chart right now, would you have two that said it's a three and three that said it's a four? Or would you have five team members that scored it all the same? That's what you want on your team. So be sure that you have your team members cohesively auditing things the same way and coding things the same way. And you do that by creating a policy. So that's what I've got for you today. If you learned something or found something valuable in today's session, how about leave me a comment or drop me an email. But for today, that's all I've got for you. Have a great one.